welcome to another episode of Podcast DX, the show that brings you interviews with people just like you whose lives were forever changed by a medical diagnosis. I'm Lita. Ron is not with us today. And I'm Jean Marie. Collectively, we're the hosts of Podcast DX. On today's show, we are speaking with the lovely Spooners, <laughs> or Spoonies, <laughs> sorry, uh, Chelsea and Casey. Cassie? Cassie, sorry. The host, the host of the real life show, Living with a Chronic Illness. And I'm sure that, you know, all of our listeners are already huge fans of yours. Absolutely. But a, a great big hello to you. How is everything going where you are? It's good. good. Thank you. Yeah. It's, Hi, everybody. We're happy yes, to be here. We're so happy to be here. It's It's been a busy year for Cassie and I, and so we're excited to be here. Awesome. Yes, Absolutely. My first question is, how long have you been podcasting and what inspired you to uh, get into podcasting? So it's been about two full years now, Cassie. I think our podcast just turned two a couple months ago. Okay. And what we, we decided to start it because we were having all these great conversations, just hanging out as friends at coffee shops. Mm -hmm. And one day Cassie was like, we should record these for everybody to listen to. (laughs) And we did it. Share the wealth. That's awesome. And um, what are some of the, and I'm going to direct this to um, to Cassie, because um, I'm curious, what are some of the biggest misconceptions people have about Crohn's disease? Yeah, that's a good question. I would say one of them is that um, it's the same as IBS. Oh. I think a lot of people kind of view it as the same thing, but it is different. There can be similar symptoms. but one of the differences, I guess, is that IBD is, as an in inflammatory bowel disease, right. which is Crohn's, is um, an immune response. I'm so sorry. And so there's disease damage, okay. you know, happening um, throughout the digestive tract. Sure. And sure. yeah, that's that's probably one of the biggest misconceptions. I also would say that it's not just contained to the digestive system. Crohn's can be experienced like throughout the body with it can affect the eyes, the skin, the joints. Um, it can be quite systemic. Okay. I, yeah. I don't know if I was aware of that. Yeah. That's good to know. Yeah. And Chelsea, as a non-spoonie, is it challenging to emphasize with Cassie? I will never pretend to know exactly what Cassie goes through every single day, but I, I like to think that I'm pretty good at being empathetic mm-hmm. and trying to understand or asking questions. Um, I always tell Cassie that every single time that I get sick, like whenever I catch the flu or a cold, just the thoughts of always having to keep track of when can I take my next dose of medication? Am I going to have enough energy to get through the day? What I have planned? Am I going to need to schedule in some rest time? That always kind of makes me think a little bit of, okay, this is what people that have chronic illnesses go through every single day. These are these extra thoughts that they're having to have. So I like to try to find ways to empathize as much as I can but I will never pretend to know exactly what anyone is going through. But I hope just to be supportive in any way that I can. I understand that. Uh, I've had a couple of migraines in my life and they're horrific. And I, whenever I do get one, it automatically comes to my mind. Oh my God, Jean goes through this every single day. Mm-hmm. It's difficult, but you do have to, uh, to try to keep that in the back of your mind so that you can be the best support that you can Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. and um cassie i just want to take it like a step back and ask um what symptoms were you having that actually led you to seek out medical care and and how long did it take you to get a diagnosis for crohn's so i started i would say with um having a really swollen tummy Mm-hmm. And some of the doctors would be like, oh, wait, are you bloated? You know, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm, this is not bloat. This <laughs> is like swelling. I mean, yeah. it was such a different feeling. Um, and so that's really what started. I kind of looked like I was seven months pregnant <gasps> every time I would eat anything or drink anything. Oh. Um, so I was having a very physical response in that sense okay. uh, with my tummy. I had struggled with some fissures. Um, and like bathroom issues off and on for a few years, but I never thought it was related whatsoever. Okay. And I just started to notice that, um, I didn't feel as energized as my peers. You know, mm-hmm. I, I noticed that I felt exhausted at the end of day at, at the end of the day of work. Um, I would look at 
people like going to work, going to the grocery store, taking their dog for a walk. And I'm just like, how are they doing right, this? Right, There's like right. no way. And so I was only, um, let's see around 26 or something. Mm -hmm. So I should have still had all the energy in the world. Right. So the combination of like really, really swollen tummy, something was wrong. I had tried a lot of different diets, paleo, et cetera, to try and treat whatever I thought might be happening with my tummy. Mm -hmm. Um, and then looking at peers, like I said, and seeing that things were different. So it took about two years from me really like noticing something was wrong, um, to getting my diagnosis. And I was probably pretty sick for about two years, even before that. So mm -hmm. total when things started to diagnose it, probably around four years. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's horrible. Yeah. That's, that's a rough, a rough road. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Especially for, yeah, for someone. So, yeah. And yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, when I got my diagnosis, I later found out that there was a lot of things on the path in those two years of when I was like, something's wrong. And I was actively, you know, trying to see doctors, trying out different diets, trying to find out what was going on. Um, I later found out a few things that they should have caught the Crohn's way before they did. Um, there was enough things kind of adding up. Yeah. Were there misdiagnoses coming in the meantime? Like, were they thinking it was something completely different or what happened? Why, why did it take so long? No, I, um, I would say that like one issue was probably, I kept thinking it was a reproductive thing. Oh, that was definitely part of it. Okay. I was going to see my OBGYN okay. and I had a lot of ovarian cysts rupturing. Okay. So I really didn't have any idea that my digestive system had an issue. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when I was going to the doctors and I'm like, my, I keep having these ovarian cysts and my periods are horrible. My blood circulation is terrible. I'm exhausted. I have headaches. I feel faint. Mm -hmm. Um, it finally with my OBGYN, actually, I was talking to him. I was in tears. I was just like, I'm in so much pain. And he said, I'm going to refer you to a gastroenterologist because from what it sounds like to me, the minute that something is entering your mouth to the minute that whatever's exiting your body is exiting, you're having issues. Mm -hmm. He said to me, this sounds digestive. Okay. And that was the first time that any doctors were like, it could be digestive. Well, so I think it was yeah. not necessarily misdiagnosis but just um maybe not looking at the right things or asking mm -hmm. the right question mm -hmm. sure sure well that's i guess a part part of the problem when females have too many things in one area of the body yep. <laughs> what do you point at that's uh right. my question for both of you is what is the best way that you have found to support someone that's living with crohn's disease that's a good question I mean, I kind of wonder if Chelsea said, should answer first, just so I don't influence your answer, Chelsea, do you think? I know. <laughs> That's fair. I mean, okay. I would say, and I feel like this isn't specific just to Crohn's disease. I mm -hmm. think this is for any chronic illness or just anything. Just be supportive and understanding. Like when Cassie says, hey, I can't hang out because I'm exhausted. I trust that she's saying that because she literally cannot hang out with me. It's not because she doesn't want to spend time with me as a friend. It's because she doesn't have the capacity to right now. So me being understanding with that is important. And I think on the flip side of if the next day she's like, Hey, I know we couldn't go get coffee yesterday, but I can today. Do you, do you have time? I should not go into a place of like, Hey, why couldn't you hang out yesterday? But you can today. Right. That's just, that's the nature of chronic illness. Right. It's very much a roller coaster. So I just, I don't know. I think understanding, supporting, and just being there in any way that you can. And I think asking the individual, what they need. Um, like I know I've had lots of conversations with Cassie of, okay, you feel like shit like right now, what do you need to feel better? Yeah. What, what support do you need? What resources do you need? Do you need a funny movie? Do you need a friend to talk to? Do you need to just cry for a little bit? Like, what do you need to make yourself feel better? Do you need to try to forget that you're sick for a little bit? And so just, I think just being a good person and believing them and supporting them is what I think the best way is, hopefully that wasn't a totally wrong answer. And Cassie's like, no, Chelsea, you're doing this all wrong. <laughs> no. no, I would totally agree. I think, um, I think, yeah, Chelsea hit it right on the head is just holding the space for the person to be where they are in that moment. Um, like Chelsea said, there's just, it can be quite a roller coaster. And um, Chelsea's always been really wonderful at just allowing me to like feel how I feel. Mm -hmm. And I really like that you said, Chelsea, like ask what they need, because 
as someone with a chronic illness, we so often are living with symptoms like day in and day out and won't say how we're feeling or won't say how, what we need because it's just this ongoing thing. And so when someone does genuinely ask, what can I do to help? What would help get through this? Like, what do you need from me? Mm -hmm. Um, Chelsea was one of the first people that asked those questions to me. And it did kind of force me to be like, oh my God, what do I need right now? And then it might be like, I need to vent. I don't want your like productive freaking positive advice. I just need to vent about how life sucks right now, Mm -hmm. you know? And, or it might say, okay, I'd like to talk through this. I'm feeling really upset because this, that, and the other, or uh, like Chelsea said, I might say, you know, I just want to like watch reality TV and just text a bunch on my phone because I'm feeling kind of lonely as what, and what was me. Right. Um, so she's always been good about asking what I need. And um, not only does that make me feel thought of and cared about, but it also forces me to be a bit more self-aware and figure out like, yeah, what do I need in that moment? Okay. Mm-hmm. And I have- kind of like to add that you should probably not give unsolicited advice. Like I mentioned oh, earlier, uh-huh. I will never pretend to know what Cassie goes through on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. So me being like, hey, you should have these green smoothies. Mm-hmm. is probably not going to be helpful. Right. So I know I try to be really intentional of like, Hey, I saw this thing online or I heard this yeah. thing that maybe would help and not saying, not presenting it in a way of like, Oh, this is going to solve all of your problems. Got it. It's more of a, maybe this is another thing that you could try mm-hmm. if you feel up to it. Mm-hmm. And what perfect. I will say that like the way that the approach for that is, is a big one as in just saying like, Hey, have you heard of this mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. instead of like, Hey, you should try this. This person cured their Crohn's disease. Mm -hmm. They'll solve all your problems. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So-and-so is (laughs) salad dressing and, or a constituent of salad dressing. Yes. And and now is perfect. Right. Right. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or so-and-so has the same condition, but they don't act like that. And it's, or they they always go to parties and it's like, oh, okay. I know. Yeah. That's horrible. You guys sound like you have just such a great connection. Yes. But in general, um, like it was like, did you, I don't know about your educational background, but like, was psychology a big part of that? Or are you just naturally empathetic to, um, in, in that kind of thing? Sorry, I'm stepping all over my own words. No, it think, makes perfect sense. I think we're both naturally empathetic. Okay. Um, and I, my education background is in exercise and science and Cassie and I are both Pilates instructors. Oh. So we do have some of an understanding of how the body works Mm -hmm. the movement is definitely our area of expertise Mm -hmm. but i do think that just in the end we are two people that are very empathetic okay um towards others okay and i think that comes across in your podcast as well right um thank you last week i was reading um several of samantha irby's books and i don't know if you've read any of them um but she goes into in-depth graphic detail and really depicts what life is like for her living with Crohn's disease. And um, one episode that she recounts is being stuck in traffic during a snowstorm and desperately needing to poop. Mm -hmm. And I know that more than one of us here in this room have needed to change (laughs) their pants after a surprise bowel movement. But um, uh, Cassie, what, if anything, do you keep in like your go bag for flare ups and or emergencies and also, um, when you are going to go out and about, do you plan ahead and make sure that you know, like, where the closest and most comfortable, clean restrooms are? There's or a is... book about that. Yeah. There's a book that a actually lists the. Clean... Uh, yeah. Yes, there is. <laughs> okay. So these are also super great questions, and I actually had like, like a 45 minute chat about this with one of my friends on Facetime on Friday, which is just <laughs> like super hilarious. Mm-hmm. Um, So, and it was actually like really refreshing to basically just talk about like, yes, those natural bodily functions Mm -hmm. and pooping for like 45 minutes. But um, I would say that like some of my go-tos for my go bag, like Mm -hmm. especially something like portable, you know, um, I have a prescription medicine called dicyclamine. It's just to take as needed. Um, It essentially like the way one can look at it is it's an anti-spasmatic. So I look at it as it kind of like shuts down my nervous system in my gut. Mm -hmm. And I will have a lot of like muscle spasming um, as in feelings like that I need to go Mm -hmm. poop. 
but then like I don't actually have to Mm -hmm. or if I am like pooping a lot I mean you know 20 30 times in the morning before I'm even going to work then that dicyclamine is definitely going to like calm things down okay um to help me get through I tend to have a few side effects from it um so I really do use it for kind of like emergencies like if I you know, yeah, if I'm going to be on a road trip, for example, with right. other people like this, like Samantha, or um, if I'm going to be going to work, um, I can't just like run to the bathroom whenever I want to at mm-hmm. work. Like sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. So I use that for sure. Um, I also have like peppermint tea or peppermint stuff to suck on, ginger stuff. I do, I do a lot of ginger tea or peppermint tea. Um, so if I know that I'm pretty nauseous, or if I'm really cramping, I'll definitely take tea with me. I usually have tea bags in my purse just in case, because that does soothe my tummy. I have a lot of nausea mm. with my Crohn's. Um, I always have to have panty liners with me because mm-hmm. I've had three fistula surgeries and I oh still have some gosh. drainage from those two. So um, I can't just like basically wear like regular underwear all the time, because mm-hmm. especially if I'm walking around um, or active in any kind of way. I still am having drainage. So I got to have panty liners with me everywhere. Um, I usually have an extra pair of underwear just in case also for that. Um, I have like a portable hot water bottle that if I'm going to like the movie theater to see a movie with my son, I will take my little tiny hot water bottle. If I'm flying, I take that little one and I will go ask like at, you know, a Starbucks in the airport, can you fill this with your hot water? You know, Mm -hmm. um, that helps with cramping. And then if I am not going to be around somewhere that I can get hot water for that, then I'll use, um, like the kind of like, what are those, those things that kind of like break those. Yes. Right. 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 Yes. The crampy things. I'll have those. Um, when I'm going out and about and do I plan ahead for restrooms? Mm -hmm. I would say kind of, yes. I think when I was chatting with my friend the other day, what I realized is like a lot of my life is planned around the bathroom Mm -hmm. when I'm going to have to go to it, what that might be like, what I'm going to do. Um, in fact, Chelsea and I did a podcast episode on like, what is a spoony thing? Like what is a chronic illness thing? What is not? Mm -hmm. And we realized that like for Chelsea, she plans her day with like preparing for snacks throughout the day. And she has, I like food. I like (laughs) food a lot. That she's like, if I'm going to be working all day, I need this many snacks. Mm-hmm. If I think about when I'm working all day, I'm like, okay, if I drink my coffee at this time, I might have a bowel movement by this time. If not, I'd be able to go after this client, make sure I'm drinking water because of this. If I eat at this time, is that going to upset my tummy? Probably. So I should wait to eat for two more hours. Like mm-hmm. my whole day is constantly planned that way. Mm-hmm. So um, I do, I do think about bathrooms pretty much everywhere that I go. And so like, I like to go for walks in the park or a uh, frisbee golfing with my boyfriend sometimes. And of course there's no bathrooms outside oh, there. So right. pretty much every time we do that, I take one of those medicines okay. to basically like shut things down. Um, but whenever I take that medicine, my tummy's pretty upset that night and the next day. So oh. I, I, if I choose to take it, you know, one day I can't make plans for the next day because I pretty much like screwed up my tummy. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so yes, I definitely make plans. I will also like, uh, make plans for where bathrooms are. I will also prepare ahead of time, like meals, for example, if I am going on a road trip mm-hmm. and I know I'll be in the car a lot the next day, I will eat very little for dinner or something very gentle, like white rice kind of thing mm-hmm. so that I don't have to go to the bathroom. I mean, it's kind of crazy because, um, I mean, it's just like constantly, every day, mm-hmm. all day long. Oh. Right, right. I Thinking can... about bathroom. Yeah. Right. Very annoying. Right. <laughs> but at least it does sound like. Now you, you got a you have routine. It, you kind of have yeah, routine down. Right. So you can plan ahead. Right. Which is, I mean. It probably took you a while to get to that point. But now that you're at that point, it's probably less stress on you because yeah. it's kind of a routine. But it's it, kind of autopilot. At yeah, this but point. unfortunately, it's you know it's a shame that you have to go through right, that. Right. That's that's the sad part. Um, I was wondering what are some of the potential complications that coincide with Crohn's disease? You were saying fistulas. Yep. So fistulas is definitely a common one. 
Um, so I've had three of those in the last couple of years and had surgery for those. Um, well, I, I found out that you've got like the DBT mm -hmm. and um, pulmonary embolism to be on there. That's where I had like a, a D dimer uh, blood marker was really high. And I was rushed to the emergency room a few years before, like a year and a half before my diagnosis, because oh. they thought I had a pulmonary embolism. Okay. And that's where it was like those markers being right. high are also a signal of mm -hmm. Crohn's disease. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so that you're more likely for that. Other complications um, are obstructions, bowel obstructions. So I had a small bowel obstruction I was in the hospital for, for five nights. Oh. Um, and then often you'll have you'll have to get bowel resections, maybe a portion of your bowel taken out mm -hmm. or an ostomy bag. Right. Um, you can have a C diff can be a complication. Sure. Um, you're more likely to have colon cancer, um, polyps, joint issues like rheumatoid arthritis, um, ankylosing spondylitis can also be kind of like complications or side effects closely related. Mm -hmm. Um, like I said, eye issues, vision issues. Mm -hmm. Um, and then additionally, most people with Crohn's disease have to go on immune suppressants to treat the disease. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole slew of side effects that tend to go with those medications. Okay. So I, I do think that, that a lot of those can fall under complications mm -hmm. with Crohn's disease mm -hmm. because you have to take those medications. Okay. And that might be like, steroid usage or mm -hmm. um there's a lot of nausea there's just there's a lot that can go along with those medications sure, sure. Well. yeah uh, high risk infection etc yeah yeah i could understand that mm -hmm. um yeah during the uh the covid pandemic nobody could find tp was that a problem for was that a problem for you so good question. No, it was not. We um, not only had we already had some stocked up from Sam's just because I had coincidentally gone, you know, a week or two before and bought okay. a big supply. Okay. There was a moment of like, oh my God. Right, mm -hmm. right. And people do not produce more. What am I going to do? Right. But even Chelsea was like, if you need TP, I got your back, you know? Yeah. Um, and I now actually use a company called Who Gives a Crap TP. Okay. Um, and so they have like sustainable toilet paper and it's, uh, I think it's bamboo based, right, Chelsea? Mm -hmm. It's bamboo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I've heard I, of them. Yeah. I started using them during the pandemic and um, maybe because they're like technically perhaps a higher end toilet paper, oh, <laughs> they okay. weren't running out quite right, so much. Right, yes. right, right, right. Yes. Um, but I do actually really like their toilet paper and I have a very sensitive bum hole. So I do recommend it. <laughs> Okay. That was so my I was, question. Yeah, yeah, I was going to ask too, because uh, I mean, I, I don't have Crohn's, but for a period of time last year, actually, until very, very recently, I, I had very similar symptoms, symptoms mm -hmm. uh, because, yeah. because I had my gallbladder out and yeah. you want the, the, the softest TP you could find, really. And butt paste. And oh, yes. butt paste! So, I'm a big, oh, yeah, butt big, pro big proponent of butt paste. I love. Oh, so I will say that you have to get the premium. Who gives a crap? TP. Okay. The regular stuff, I do not like okay. whatsoever. So, I so just, who gives a crap has premium TP? Yes. Get okay. The premium. That's okay. where it's at. The other stuff is crap. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good to know. Yes, Good to know. You. We will definitely pass that information along. And um. I'm also curious if there's anything new on the horizon that you're looking forward to um, as far as preventing or maybe even curing Crohn's disease. And also, um, I don't know if I, and I don't know if you have um, the complication where you have the, you know, your eyelids tend to droop. And if so, um, have you tried the eye drops for that? So I am fortunate. I have not had issues with my eyes okay. for Crohn's okay. yet. Um, so I have not tried any eye drops. Okay. Um, mine has been more digestive related symptoms and joint pain. I get okay. like my elbows and knees and shoulders will hurt a lot. Um, so I would, yeah, that's, that's a really also great question. I mean, all of you guys, have, all the questions have been great. I, I would probably say we live in Kansas. Mm -hmm. We do not have, um, a medical marijuana program here. Oh, There's okay. none of it. Okay. And You're one of the only states that does not. Wow. Okay. Yes. And mm -hmm. I have seen and read so many scientifically proven articles 
about specifically medical marijuana helping Crohn's disease and inflammation. Sure, and, and nausea. Get, and nausea, yeah. exactly. And like this getting that high quality CBD and kind of building that up in your body, like that having a really good impact. I I would say that that is one of the new things I hope Kansas gets okay. because I do feel like that could be really beneficial for me. As I mentioned, I've just read so much about it. Um, that is probably the only thing that I know of that I haven't tried okay. that's on the horizon, at least for our state. Okay. okay. So Kansas listeners out there, contact your state representative and, yeah. and vote, it, vote it in. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They they vote on it. They've been voting on it pretty much every single year. Okay. So and it gets shut down. We get we get we get hopeful yeah. and a little closer every year. Well, okay. maybe the federal level will will go through first, and then you won't have to worry about it. That, honestly, mm-hmm. that's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. That's what I think everyone's hoping for. In yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And um, what do you wish you knew? Um, you know, as soon as you got Crohn's disease, what do you know now that you wish you knew then? And is there anything that you know, like if you any advice you have for someone recently diagnosed with Crohn's? I wish that I knew that it could be so full bodied of a disease Mm. because before my diagnosis, like I said, I, I almost had so many symptoms Mm -hmm. that I, like, I was like, I think I have Hashimoto's Mm -hmm. and I was like, I definitely got to have like endometriosis or PCOS. Like there was just so many symptoms that clicked Mm -hmm. and I just did not relate it to a digestive disorder Mm -hmm. at all. So um, I wish I would have known how much it can affect the whole body. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think something I would have done differently if I knew about the disease earlier. Um, Or if I had known more about the disease. I mean, I probably would have like asked to be checked out for digestive stuff. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, diet, when you get diagnosed with Crohn's disease, you get handed a pamphlet and the diet recommendations are just shit. I mean, it's like, there's no nutrition recommendations. So I think like, but I know that they're also redoing that. I think I was really insistent when I got my diagnosis that I could cure it with diet, with diet. Mm-hmm. I was in a place that I was like, I've learned about Crohn's. I've been doing whole 30. I've been doing the autoimmune protocol. Like I can really take care of my body. I wish I would have known that that was very unlikely to happen and maybe been more open to Western medicine also. That being said, after about a year, I had my small bowel obstruction. I was in the hospital. I did start Remicade and autoimmune or an immune suppressant Mm -hmm. for Crohn's. Um, But then it's almost like when you go into that Western route, then they're like, nothing else will help you. Right, 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 right. And then steroids. Right. So I just wish that I would have known earlier that I should just take a little bit of everything because it wasn't until the last few years that with Chelsea and I doing our podcast and talking about it and talking with people, I did not believe that I could heal. I just was so beat down by the disease. I didn't really think anything could be like a magic fix, but I started a mantra of I'm choosing to believe that I'm getting all the puzzle pieces in order for me to heal. And looking at it from that perspective, like everything might be a puzzle piece from Mm -hmm. Western medicine, alternative, you know, working on stress, meditation, like everything, Mm -hmm. you know, all of that is what's going to help you get better. And so I think I just, I know that's a little bit like my words are a little bit all over the place. I mean, that's a hard question. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think basically to sum up some of the alternative beliefs of curing Crohn's or helping it Mm -hmm. are really extreme. Some of the Western are really extreme. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a balance in the middle of taking something from everything. Um, And that might be the key to healing. Okay. Okay. So like an integrative health approach. I was just going to ask, do you see a a functional or 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 integrative health? Right professional? Yeah. So currently I'm kind of doing everything. Okay. I'm on immune suppressants. Um, I'm taking medication. I'm about to do some antibiotics because I had to take antibiotics in, earlier this year. And now we think I have SIBO. Okay. So I'm about to start a different course of antibiotics that's supposed to help the SIBO. Um, and uh, so I am taking a lot of Western medication at the same time. 
I'm gluten free. Okay. Um, I am pretty careful with my diet. I don't eat inflammatory foods. I don't eat fried foods. I don't drink soda, like stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I drink juices. Um, I'm sort of okay at taking some supplements. <laughs> um, so I, I see an acupuncturist. I do body work. Um, I do a lot of meditation. I recently did a, there's a new app. It's called Nerva, IBS, N-E-R-V-A. And it is uh, gut directed medication or meditation and hypnosis. Oh, okay. So I just did that. And so I, I will try anything. Mm -hmm. I've tried so many different things. Um, so I would say that I do take like a holistic approach as in W H O L E. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Okay. Well, and, and also, I mean, being a Pilates instructor, um, I would think that, you know, like how does health and fitness in that regard come into play? So I definitely think that Pilates has saved my body. Um, it is, that and walking is pretty much the only form of exercise my body can tolerate. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a little bit of yoga, but I even have to be careful with yoga. Okay. Um, Pilates is fantastic for joints. Mm -hmm. It's great for any kind of arthritis, osteoporosis, mm -hmm. et cetera. So I know that my joint pain would be so much worse if I didn't have Pilates. Mm -hmm. And second to that, I've herniated my back before with my three surgeries, rectal surgeries, mm -hmm. the positions I had to be in when I couldn't be seated or I couldn't, I couldn't even lay on my back yeah. because it would put pressure on my butt cheeks. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. I kept screwing up my back and Pilates saved me. So I know that if I wasn't a Pilates instructor and didn't already have this, my body would be in such worse condition. So I absolutely recommend it for anyone with any kind of chronic illness. It, um, Pilates was the equipment was originally designed for hospital patients mm -hmm. in their hospital beds. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I, I definitely think I have like an edge up with that being my career. That's great. Uh, yeah. yeah. It, it's another puzzle piece there for right, you. Right. Yeah. Seems to exactly. Fit. Yeah. Yes. That's fantastic. And it does sound, um, for all of our medical students out there listening that if you're doing your residency in gastroenterology, it would probably behoove you to also, you know, cross check things with OBGYN, um, and, and vice versa, because it, you know, there is an overlap and, uh, potential symptoms and right, causation. right. It's, yeah. it's gotta, Absolutely. gotta be difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, are there any tips, hints, tricks, equipment, uh, supplies, anything that you, that you can recommend to, uh, somebody, somebody that's newly diagnosed with Crohn's? Yeah, because we, yeah, yeah. I would say, um, I think firstly finding you know, obviously they're going to be listening to this podcast. So finding mm -hmm. some podcasts of sort of like these real life accounts so that, you know, you're not alone. Mm -hmm. I like, that's part of why Chelsea and I started it mm -hmm. is I really felt like I was so alone in so many things. I mean, even the simple thing of like sitting on the toilet and being there for so long. And I'm like, okay, my legs are completely freaking numb. They're totally pins and needles. Like, and then it's like, wait, hold on. Other people go through this. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. So I think like finding um, maybe through social media, you can find some communities or podcasts to know you're not alone. That being said, a lot of the Facebook groups that are out there are super negative oh. and they talk about the horrors of living with this disease. So I don't really recommend going there right at first because you okay. might get scared. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just sort of be selective on where you choose to take counsel from mm -hmm. in that sense. Um, and I... Chelsea and I talked about this on one of our episodes as well. When I got diagnosed with my disease, one of my first thoughts was, oh my gosh, I got the icky one. Mm. Like I got the icky disease, freaking great. And I really struggled with seeing my body as like my, I, I was married at the time. My husband at the time kind of stopped touching me. I just oh. felt like I was oh. icky basically. Oh. Oh. And I really struggled with that for a long time. Yeah. And so I think that if someone was newly diagnosed, I wouldn't want them to feel that way. I'd want you to know you're so beautiful. And this is, you know, your body going through bodily functions that everybody goes through. Ours are just heightened. Right. And, um, I think like that was something I would have liked maybe in the beginning. And I'd want someone to know you're not alone, what you're experiencing. There's someone out there probably experiencing it as well. Right. Um, and 
that you are still beautiful. Your body is still wonderful. And, um, you know, ultimately everything is going to be okay. Right, right. Um, in order to lead into the other question and tie this one into the last one, mm-hmm. did you know that Mr. Beast also has Crohn's? Who's Mr. Beast? Oh, he oh, is a boy. he is a, a, a viral YouTuber that gives away millions oh, of dollars. Yeah. With gaming? Huh? Gaming, yeah, yeah, gaming yeah, guy? yeah, yeah. He does like, right. Yeah, yeah. My son told me about him. Yes, I do know about him. Right. Um, my son actually he watched his videos and a few years ago he's like, Mom, he has Crohn's too. Oh, I would yes. right. So um I'd like to talk a little bit about your podcast. What's new and exciting about your podcast and what guests might be uh coming on your show this year and why don't you get him on your show? That would be cool. Yeah. Yes. He, that would be really neat. Yeah, he's located in North Carolina. That's that's but the only thing I, I can... Say, and I'll point out that we just love it when other people say, why don't you put this person on your show? So I am... Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. He'd be, I know, right? He'd be exciting. We yeah. actually just took... We are open to lots of different guests. Mm-hmm. Um, we actually have a whole email folder mm-hmm. saved for people that have reached out to us or people that we found and... We actually just took a couple month break of the podcast because Cassie and I have had a really, really busy end of last year, beginning of this year so far. And okay. we love our listeners and want to give them quality content. And so sure. we were like, okay, we need to take a pause for a couple months just to regroup. Mm-hmm. And so we have a bunch of guests that we're going to be reaching out to. Some of them are individuals that have chronic illnesses of various kinds and want to share their stories. Some of them are some more kind of healthcare professionals in different areas that are wanting to share their knowledge and expertise to try to help people in any way that they can. Um, And then Cassie and I, of course, will, we have our real talks where it's just the two of us chit chatting about whatever topic we come up with. And we've got some really fun ones planned um, for the the next few months. So it's going to be, it's going to be good. That sounds awesome. Yeah. It's like listening in um, to your friends. It's like, yeah, hearing them have a chat. Yeah. Which is very nice. Um, what mm-hmm. advice do you two have for someone who's starting a podcast? Just do it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I guess. Agree. I know when Cassie was like, we should record a podcast. I was like, what? <laughs> um, and I was terrified and I was like, I don't know how to do that. How are we going to figure it out? And so it was really helpful. I know for me to have Cassie to lean on mm-hmm. and know that there was this other person that if we got stuck, like every, everything wasn't on me. I do a lot of things that it is just me um, mm-hmm. and I have to figure it out if there's a problem. So having Cassie there to talk me through stuff or to figure stuff out herself, it just, it, it was great to have a friend to lean on, but really just do it. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Just do it. Okay. Good advice. Yes. Good advice. Thank well, you. thank you very much for taking the time to uh, talk with us today. How can our listeners learn more about you two and your podcast? So our podcast is The Real Life Show, Living with a Chronic Illness. You should be able to look it up on pretty much every single podcasting platform that exists. Um, we're on all of them. And then the other way to get a hold of us is on Instagram. We're at The Real Wellness Hub on Instagram. We share about our podcast there. We share about other things that we're doing. Um, you could also send us an email at hello at therealspooniesunite.com. Okay. Sounds good. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we really appreciate you taking the time out of your day. Yes. And um, we wish you all the best. And we'll be uh, looking forward to new shows. And mm-hmm. we're very, yeah, we can't wait to hear what's coming up. Yes, thank you. Thank both you so much for having us on. Uh, it, was this has been great. it was our pleasure. Thank yes. you. You have a great day. Thanks. If our listeners have any questions or comments related to today's show, they can contact us at podcastdx <laughs> at yahoo.com through our website, podcastdx.com. On Facebook, Meta, TikTok, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, we're everywhere. Okay. And if you have a moment to spare, please give us a review wherever you get your podcast. Check us out on Spotify. Why not? As always, please keep in mind that this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, and always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or treatment and before undertaking a new healthcare regime. And never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you've heard of this podcast. Till next week. Oh,